subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ninja Selling Podcast. I'm Matt, he's Garrett, and we have a wonderful topic for y'all today. And I just want to say that we appreciate all of you for listening. And I owe everybody, Garrett, well, maybe not everybody, but I do owe some people a apology, okay? So many of you know that I still have my license, but I don't actively list and sell real estate. So I, there is an office tied to my name that you can find online and, and send mail there. Well, I went and checked the mail. Was this maybe last week or two weeks ago? And there are birthday cards in there. <laughs> my birthday is in June. <laughs> And there was also a lot of notes in there and everything, podcast listeners. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who is sending me mail there. I appreciate you so much. And then I apologize for not checking that mailbox sooner. I will get better at that <laughs> so that I can get in there and get that mail. And perhaps at some point, Garrett and I will find uh, have a mailing address or something that we can share publicly where you guys can send mail to. But I just, I wanted to apologize because some people out there are going, Gosh, you know, I sent Matt this note six months ago. Well, I got it. I just did, and I appreciate it. Well, unlike unlike Matt, I'd like to say thank you to Lori Peter with Sotheby's in St. George, Utah, because she sent me such a nice note. I actually did want to say thank you to you, uh, Lori. I, I, it's funny, Matt. She listened to the the recent episode where we were actually together here in in Reading. And she said there was something different. It was Zen-like. And then she was curious if we did yoga maybe before. <laughs> <laughs> we were in a really good place. We'll just say that. Yep, we were just together uh, recording a podcast because I was waiting on an airplane. And uh, yeah. it wasn't there. And uh, St. George, shout out to my brother, Bob, yeah. who lives in St. George. Beautiful so, area. What a great place. Ryan Seacrest lives there. Steve Magnuson lives there. Good golf there. St. George is the place, man. But anyway, there was a, a lot of notes in there. I would list all your names out, but I don't have them all in front of me. And I just want to say I appreciate you guys. And I'll get better about checking that mailbox. But Gary, we got a great episode today talking about the long game. This is something that you came up with, another awesome analogy that we're going to dive into here and how how we can weather storms that come along the way in this career because I don't think anybody expects to get into real estate and be in it only for a year or two and then exit with a bank full of money, right? Most people are in it and they know they got to be in it for the long game. Well, and I think the challenge, Matt, is we get people that they want the immediate wins. They want the immediate fun. They want the immediate business. And then this last year was a great kind of eye-opening for a lot of people. Um, I think we've mentioned it before, but I have a lot of people that keep coming to me talking about, oh, the unicorn years. 2020, 2021, maybe a little bit of 2022, these unicorn years. And I agree. They were freaks of nature, which I got to say is an interesting perspective because during 21, those same people were like, this is insane. I can't handle it. When is this going to stop? It wasn't healthy. And now they're looking back to like, ah, oh, the unicorn years. <laughs> it wasn't healthy in any way, shape or form. It was insane. It was not fun. It was people burned out. It was people doing everything they could to get a deal accepted. And if they had the actual listing, they're like, what do I do with 50 offers I just received? Like, it was insane. Yeah. But at the same point, like, it was interesting to watch people go through that and go, this is my new business. Like, look at all the opportunities I've created. Look at this income that I've, you know, I've been able to sustain now for a year or two. And then all of a sudden, a year comes through and just rips your feet out from underneath you and makes you realize that maybe I didn't know as much as I knew. And so I've been thinking a lot about the people that have gone through these years and how they have kind of weathered through this storm. And I, you know, as my brain thinks and analogies, I started to kind of go on like, well, you know, what kind of boat were you in? That's <laughs> where, my, where my brain went to. Like, literally, like, what kind of boat did you build? Because... I know I can take a wakeboarding boat and go out and have a whole lot of fun on the lake. Nice, calm water, days clear, sun shining, go out and have a lot of fun. It doesn't take much of a storm on the lake for us to all go, okay, let's, let's, let's go back to the dock. Like, it's not fun out here. This boat, we can't use this boat for what it's meant for. We're not enjoying this anymore. Well, then you go out in the ocean, Matt, and you say, okay, would we even take the wakeboarding boat out in the ocean? 
on the nicest of nicest days. You can, but you totally <laughs> could. At the same point, there's a lot of people that would be going, what are you doing? Like one, it's, it's just maybe not safe. There's better boats to be out here. in, And you start working your way up the ladder of different boats that are, you go farther and farther and farther out in the ocean. There's some that you stay within beach shot all the time. We don't want to go too far out. And then there's some that you set the navigation and you go way out. And then there's some that you cross the ocean. You will go from continent to continent. And I think it's really important for you to stop and say, well, what kind of boat have I built with my business? Do I have a boat that can go out and weather any storm that's out there and return to port and be totally safe? Or am I fighting through these storms in a boat that was never meant to be out here, was never built or designed for this, but we're just keep going. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to just keep showing up. I'm going to be doing my stuff and just keep on going, but we're not strengthening the boat. And strengthening the boat is the foundation of your business. You know, we talk about database all the time. It takes time to build an incredible database of people that know you, like you, and trust you. And I know there's a lot of people out there that think building a database is just having a list of names. And it's, it's not. It, that's the shell of the boat. That's like the, maybe the pieces of this thing, but it's the deep, deep, deep relationships you build that take time and energy and consistency. And when you can start doing that type of stuff and you build this map, this is, this is the security of these, these really well-built ships that we, both of us and a lot of our coaches, we all have people that we know that we're like, man, they went through that time and they were like, man, it's crazy, but we're good. We got to figure it out. We're doing our stuff. And then going through 2023 and they're like, you know what? I outperformed everybody in my office and everybody in my town and just kept my head down and we did our stuff and we went. And same thing that's going to happen in this year. The ones that I'm watching that have well-built ships right now are creating results that I have personally never seen in my 20 years of doing this. Yeah, I, it's, I love the analogy too. And I think in particular, because with several people predicting that we could be seeing 5% in interest rates this year, 2024, that unicorn year could very much be repeating itself because there can be an increase in demand. You're going to see loan officers get back in the game for refinances. Inventory starting to come up. I've heard it from a couple of people where they're like, we're finally starting to get inventory. I'm like, yeah, hang on, grab, grab. Yeah, it's going to get, it's going to get grabbed up real quick. And listen, some of these things are unpredictable in terms of where will demand and supply be at. I mean, I, I, yes, there's trends and all the other stuff. However, with, a, with unpredictable weather, really, you want to have that ship that is built to be able to sustain it. And I think sometimes, Garrett, the people who've built big ships, so I've seen this happen too, during the calm times, right? When things are easy, they're like, gosh, there's all these like new guys just running laps around me. You know, that's when the distraction, the shiny object syndrome, well, this guy's hitting it big over on TikTok or this person's doing this thing. All of those wakeboarding and speedboats are just flying around the harbor and, and the flat, smooth lakes or whatever it is. Just that, that old crotchety boat owner on this big old yacht that's just like, God damn, wait for it. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, that, and so, sometimes people can get into that, that viewpoint. Like I built this big ship and now I don't even need it. It's funny you bring up a yacht because I picture like a yacht. Now, I've never been on one of these mega yachts, but I've watched Below Deck Mediterranean and all the other nice. stuff on TV. And we have a, a great boating scene here in Charleston, which is amazing. And we see some pretty incredible yachts come through. They have the gear. They have the other boats on there too. So it's also kind of like, what type of fleet do you have set up? And are you accessing all of those things? And that's where if you can, if you build up to, because you, you're not going to start with the big boat. You're not going to start with the big battleship. So if you're new, don't worry. You may have to be driving that wakeboarding boat around in the rough ocean. You can do it. You're going to be stressed. You're going to white knuckled the whole time. You're probably working overtime hours. The key is seeing the vision to get beyond that so that you see, okay, I need to now build a bigger hull. I need to use this material. And and as it relates to your business, that's, okay, how, who are the people in my database that I need to build those stronger relationships with? What are the parts of my system and processes do I need to smooth out and build in more things up front so that when it's busy, I'm not spending 
three hours on this conversation. I'm only spending 30 minutes. Well, and, and I think, Matt, as you're building this out, like I am sitting here kind of running through all the different boats that I typically will see when I'm out on the lake. And there are there are definitely flashy boats. There's ones that make people from across the harbor go, whoa, like, look at that thing. <laughs> yeah. And it might be its only purpose is going from zero to 80 miles an hour and back to zero. We have those out on the lake and they're they're called muscle boats and they serve no other purpose than making people go, nice boat, man. Like that's all they do. And then there's utility boats. Like there are harbor boats that they use for work in our local marina and they're battle worn. They are rock solid. Like those are the boats that when, when everything is breaking and falling apart in a storm, you go get in that boat and you can seal up all the hatches. You can get in your little cabin. It's got a heater. It can take a wave over the bow and completely soak this thing and the water drains out of it. And it just pops up to the surface and you just keep on driving away. Like they're both the same size boat. They're just built very, very, very differently. And I think when you start as a newer agent and you start building your your business out, I think it's very easy to go down the path of wanting to build the muscle boat. That makes people want to look at it and be like, wow, nice boat, man. Um, I'm watching my daughter's going through right now with one of her friends in town who's young. He's 19 years old, got his real estate license. And he's the buzz of all the parents and all the people right now like, wow, look at how good he's doing and stuff. And and it's really interesting. It's a, it's a lot of uh, just stuff. It's a lot of just pictures and things and things that are going out, which is great, but there's no real substance to it. And my daughter mentioned it the other night where she was like, is he really doing any business? Like, is he really like doing, is there anything that's really happening behind the scenes? And the more we had to break it down, we realized it's very flashy right now, but it's not a sustainable business at the moment. Now, there's a lot of people that say, yeah, but you got to do that to like get there and to go there. And, you know, I'm coaching my daughter very differently right now where I'm like, right now you're getting your real estate license. Start building your database now. Like that is your most important thing you have because I, I want her to have the flashy boat built in the right way. And I want people to go like, whoa, wow, you're doing so well. Like I, that, that's, that's an okay thing. At the same point, though, is like the point in building this is that she's got an incredible database in town. She's got an incredible group of, of parents and friends and teachers. And you know, she's lived 15 years in this town and uh, she can build this incredible database. That's the that's the solid foundation. And I, and I think that's just that's what we got to go back to. And that's what we need to be paying attention to all the time is what is the foundation of this boat look like? And I don't mind it being a battle worthy boat with a nice fresh coat of paint on it. Like we can have some fun. Absolutely. And I think that that goes to durability right and now. I mean, from a pure boat analogy, size makes a difference in different types of waters. But when you just think about what's at the core of durability, you look at some of these these Coast Guard boats and, and stuff. We have a great Coast Guard station here in Charleston and you get to see the different boats that they have. And there's some small boats that can get out in the ocean and do some pretty significant stuff. And it's because they are durable. And I think even if you're new to this business or if you're seasoned, the durability is the most important thing of your business, right? And when I think about durability of your business, this is your database. And we cannot get away from that. A lot of people start with, how do I market? How do I do this listing consult? How do I do this? I'm not saying those things aren't important, but without the durability of your database or if you don't have a database, if you've been airdropped into a brand new place and you know zero people, the durability comes in what are your daily actions and habits to build that database and build relationships. I am fascinated. I, we may have said this on another podcast, but there's a lot of people in the industry who are like sharing these what are seemingly epiphanies of like, oh my gosh, it comes down to conversations. It's all about how many people we talk to. It's not about the lead gen and this and that. It's like, yeah, no kidding. And that is the durability is, are you doing enough to have conversations? Are you good at those conversations? Before you practice the marketing aspects, practice the conversations. If you have 2,000 followers, 5,000 followers, 10,000 followers on social media, but you don't have 100, 200 people yep. locally who know you, we have a mismatch on what's going to drive the 
durability of your business. One is, hey, that looks cool. And maybe is a long run benefit. That could be the the extra that we do on top. But without that core durability, we're probably not doing a lot of business. And you look at durability also, Matt, and that's education too. Like I look at like, you got to be able to bring the highest level of value at the highest level of professionalism with knowledge. And, uh, you know, I got a good friend right now that's getting a CCIM and, and, and he was kind of like going like, you know, should, you know, should I do it? Think I'm going to do it. And I said, you know, in the days that we're coming into and kind of this setting yourself apart as a real estate agent and being able to go and justify your fee that you're whatever you're choosing to charge that you can back it up way more than the initials of CCIM that only matter to the realtor that's sitting next to you. And most realtors, even when I say a CCIM are going like a CCI, what? Like, what is that? <laughs> a lot of people are like, what's that? What is that? And particularly if you're in residential. Yeah, because you're in res residential. But it's one of those things that if you were to break it out of what your education level is and what you've chosen to go and pursue, and also the amount of people that actually go and take a CCIM class and actually walk out of it with the designation, because it's not everybody. It's a, it's a one, I think one of the most difficult designations I think you can get. But it is like, this is the durability of, your, of whatever you're creating. And so you've got a database, we've got this education and knowledge that makes us the expert. And anybody who's listening, this is whatever your chosen field is in. Ben and Jerry's did not just go like, let's just whip together some ice cream and like, hey, we'll have some fun. And we'll put some fun names on it. Like they became experts in the art of making ice cream. And how do you put that together? And they built a business off of that. And because of that, and also every interview, if you ever watch Ben and Jerry's and their stuff, like they're kind of goofball type of guys. Like they then built also a database of people and the thing grew and it got huge. And I think that you, any business works in this manner, the long-term sustainable ones specifically, if you go and choose to kind of do some research on them. So I think there's, there's a handful of things here. When you look at building durability, it's not just people and it's not just the education because you can be highly educated and know nobody and you're, you know, got a, big, awesome ship floating around the harbor with nowhere to go. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like they say, is you can have the best ideas, but they're not necessarily going to turn into the best businesses without action and access and all the other things that you need to do. But I think the interesting thing, Matt, and I think you can look at anybody in your marketplace that is right now really sort of excelling, we'll say that, not just surviving, they are excelling in their business. And you watched them go through these last couple of years and like, man, they were like rock solid. You know, those are the people that instead of looking at them and going like, rah, 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 so and so is always doing good, blah, 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 like go learn from them, like go watch them, go take them out to lunch, figure out how they've built this business and what they've done because they may not. And I'm, and I do find this, they're not necessarily the flashiest of flashy people. They're not the ones that are out there doing all the TikToks and doing all the, the big videos and trying to see how many views and likes they have. They have this battle worn ship that is out there just going out and taking care of people and doing business. And they may still have the flashy stuff, but you don't know what it took to build that. And, and Stuart Emery in Mastery says it- It's accessories. Says it right there, right? You know, another step on the path to mastery is removal of resentment toward masters, right? Be in the presence of masters so you can grow from the experience rather than, I mean, if we're out there judging people on how they do things and we're not doing those things, we're not experiencing the same results, who are we to judge them on those things? Let's learn. Maybe we don't want to do the things that brought them to that level of their business, which is totally fine. But if we learn and know that stuff, we can apply that to figure out, okay, how do I want to build the durable business that sustains me through these storms, that helps sustain my clients, that allows me to provide this incredible value? And so I, I think the, my ask of people who are listening to this is take a moment to Assess the durability of your business. Yeah. And that starts with your database again, right? Look at that and say, hey, how many of these people do I really know well? And what do I really know about them? Take a look at your hot and warm list. I was just having this conversation with an agent yesterday. But tell me about your warm list. And there was a lot of conversation about, well, they said they might want to do this or might want to do that. I'm like, wait, I want to know about the people who haven't talked to you about real estate. And there was a long pause. And I said, that's what we need to lean into if we're only having conversations with people in our action lists, which is what I like to call the hot and warm list, that are related to specifically to real estate, we are keeping our focus way too narrow. Our durability isn't there because the intent 
on building the relationships that form this foundation isn't there, right? Yeah. It doesn't mean that we don't have good relationships. It's just the intent to do that for our business is not there. And so take a look at your hot and your warm list. Is it just filled with people that you've only talked to about real estate? Or does your warm list have people with life changes on it that you are learning about, that you are providing value to, that you are showing up and asking questions about? And this does not mean every single day. Yeah. Like the cadence of communication doesn't have to be crazy for you to build a durable database with strong relationships, right? Well, and, and if you look at those people, and as I said, you know, go out and interview some of these people and take a look at them. Like, it's very easy sometimes from the outside going, yeah, but she's got all these things and she's got all this stuff she's doing. And I, and I mentioned it a second ago, which I think it's really good to realize what are accessories and what are the things that are actually the things that make the boat and, or make the foundation. And there's lots of stuff you can tack on top of a really fun, like, I mean, like take, take a cruise ship for an example. It's a really big, safe boat. You can put an incredible amount of people in and go out and weather any single storm you ever want to go out and pretty much manage. Is it fun on those boats and some of those massive, massive storms? No, all the, all the party's gone. There's no party anymore. It's about hanging on and battening down the hatches. However, on a cruise ship, they can put the water slides and the go-kart tracks and the big pools and the stadium and the concerts going on and all this types of stuff that's happening that make it really glamorous and glitzy and fun. But they need the big ship to keep the party going. Like if they don't have the big ship, the party has to return to port and batten down and, and the party's over because we're now sitting over here while the storm passes here. And Matt, you made a great analogy before we got on. Like some, there's some boats that it's okay to go return to port and park it and just be like the storm will pass. Yeah, but you have to be aware of that and conscious of that. Like it's okay if you're like, hey, my, you know, I rocked it out last year. I'm just going to kind of like just kind of chill for a little bit as this thing goes by and then and just kind of do the other things, work on the boat, tweak the boat, maybe throw a new engine in, you know, throw a couple turbos on there. So next time we come out, I'm flying. That's fine. You know, but you have to be really aware of that and understand the unpredictability of that then too. A lot of those agents that you see out there right now that weathered through all this and they're glitzy and they're glamoury and they've got big stuff going on. They may have a, a lot of money going in and out, making this business work. I'm going to be fairly confident be like, those are probably the cruise ships that you're watching out there, give or take. They've built this ship. They've put it in. It's very safe. I can weather through almost anything. And yeah, they've, they've been able to attach some pretty cool stuff on the outside of it that makes people step back and be like, wow, did you see what she's got going on? Yeah. And that's okay. Totally okay. And, and I'll, I'll, th All good. I'll throw in a plug for the think tank, Garrett, that you hosted Oh yeah. Uh, last month with inside our coaching community, which the, there we do these things thanks so every other month. Once a quarter. Every other month. Yeah, we do masterminds on the flip side and then, yeah. Yeah. And um, so if you're a part of our coaching program, you get access to all this stuff. And we had some great agents sharing what they did in it. And Garrett, we, we didn't use this analogy on the think tank, but they're all, they're all driving cruise ships. Yeah. They're all driving big ships with solid hulls, you know, all the durability. And they're just making sure that the basics were done so that they could do the fun stuff on top of that and have the best 2023, which was their best year in the business ever. And these were people who've been in the business for a long time. It wasn't like, yeah, like I got really lucky and like my third year in the business happened to be the best year. These were seasoned real estate veterans who've been through all the markets having their best year in 2023. So, you know, it's an actually interesting thing as this analogy continues to kind of grow here. I could totally see going back, if I was to go back into real estate, I could see Writing an analogy on the wall, or and I, this is the way my brain works. Is I start drawing, I have whiteboards, I have glass I write on. I I, I kind of just throw thoughts all over the place a lot of times. And uh, I could totally see going, okay, I'm building a cruise ship. That's what I need to think about. And this cruise ship is designed to keep all my people safe. That's what it's designed to keep. I want them to be able to get from point A to point B. And everybody's got journey looks a little bit different. Some people are getting off at different places, but I'm I'm here to get them from point A to point B. And literally what I am, I'm the cruise ship director. It's what I am. I'm going to make sure that they're going to have all the fun that they're going to have. Now, again, I'm a party personality, so bear with me. There's there's power people out there going, it's not about the fun. It's okay. <laughs> but from the party cruise side- Cruise ships like, are all about the fun. Yeah. Underlying, lying, it's all about the safety, but come on. Yeah. And I think that that's the big thing is like, I could build a business around that with that picture in mind. 
of every single person that comes into my ship going, okay, look, you own a home. You're part of this journey with me. We're in this thing. And, you know, I've said, Matt, many times, like, I love that mentality of like, I'm here to give you your best homeowner experience you can possibly have. That would be the job of the cruise director. I'm here to give you the best cruise experience you're ever going to experience. And cruise directors can make or break cruises. Like they're, they're the ones that are keeping all the things going to make sure people know about it and where to go. Just like all your inspections and all your home repairs and things like that. And a remodel project you should be doing to get the biggest value for your house or again, enjoy, get the most enjoyment out of it. Like there's a lot to it. If you wanted to kind of take that picture and run with it, that um, you could build something pretty awesome around it with that type of mentality. No doubt. No doubt. So I, I think the the message is... I should go back into real estate. This year, I mean, the durable businesses are going to see incredible success. And maybe the white-knuckled speedboat captains will too. Well, Larry talks about learning to either weather the storm or learning to dance in the rain. Dance in the rain. And I think that... I actually think we have some pretty nice waters in front of us right now. In, in all honesty of like what where we're at right now, and this is why I wanted to have this conversation today with you, Matt, is that I'm not sitting here saying batting down the hatches. We got a huge storm in front of us. We got to figure this out. What I'm actually saying is, is that these are the times where it's like, let's make sure this boat is built the way that we want to build it so we can weather anything that's coming in front of us. And sometimes when the, when the seas are really nice and calm and, and they're really kind of the way they're at right now, we kind of neglect building a stronger ship and we get a little complacent and we kind of just, you know, get into the day-to-day -day stuff. And then all of a sudden the storm comes up and we go, damn it, I wish I would have. I wish I would have spent more time doing this. A lot of times you'll know it because you'll say, I need to get back to the basics. Storm's starting to come up and it's like, oh yeah, I've got to get back to the stuff that's going to keep me safe in this new storm that's kind of, you know, come about. Maybe you created the storm or maybe the storm was created on the outside. But, you know, these are the times that you need to lean into them and, and really build some security into your business. So, again, no way, shape or form am I sitting here telling everybody bad down the hatches as a storm are coming. Uh, that's not oh, no way. my message. No. And really, the cool thing about this business is that the weather is what you make of it, right? I mean, yes, there are certain things like 08, got it. 2020, got it. But... Really, the difference between someone saying, oh my gosh, this is a storm to somebody else being like, what are you talking about? Is the durability of your business. What did you set yourself up for? So Garrett, I love the analogy, man. Appreciate you bringing it onto the table. I think this year is going to be, I mean, it already is pretty awesome year so far. I'm seeing some really fun stuff happen out there. So just very much excited to see how 2024 continues and who's got the right boat. Yep. I think we'll have some fun. And, uh, and again, uh, as you grow with your business and as you're figuring out what you want this to look like, obviously, if you're new to Ninja Selling, go check out ninjaselling.com. If you're looking specifically for coaching and someone that can help you build the boat that you want to build, build the ship that you want to build so that you can go and weather any storm out there. We've got amazing group of coaches, uh, highly trained in Ninja, highly trained in real estate, uh, all of real estate backgrounds. Uh, I will throw out that you know, we, we actually coach a lot of people that are not in real estate. We coach a lot of insurance agents. I've coached attorneys. We've coached the all different you know, walks of life. And it's crazy. I yet to find the industry that Ninja doesn't work in to build a strong foundation for a business. So um, anybody like that, if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you along that path, just reach out to us either through the website, ninjaselling.com. You can go to ninjacoaching.com. You can also uh, reach out to Matt or I, and we'll make sure that we can get you taken care of. And in the meantime, you want to also get around a group of people that are like you that listen to the podcast and want to share great ideas. That group is growing on Facebook, the Ninja Selling Podcast Community. And um, love to have you there. Amazing group, amazing people, amazing ideas. And uh, with that being said, Matt, thank you so much. Everybody listening, thank you so much. We appreciate you all and we will be back soon. Take care, everybody. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.